So to make resizable and reusable buttons using nine patches, you're going to need three objects, one for each state. So the idle, the hover, and the pressed. So if you're just using a normal sprite, then you can use these as the animations. But since nine patches don't have the animations that sprites do, you're going to need three separate objects. First of all, I'm just going to change my background color to fit the sprites that I'm using. So I'm going to make my first object. I'm going to make it a nine patch. I'm just going to call it button one and the image. I'm just going to pick this one. The top margin, I'm going to make eight. The left margin, I'm going to make eight. But my bottom margin is going to be 30 and my right margin is going to be 32. But your nine patches will probably be different to this. In the behaviors, I'm just going to add a tween behavior. I can drag this in and resize it. I can then duplicate this and call it button two and just change the image. I'm then going to duplicate this, call it button three and change the image again, like so. So now we have three objects to represent the three different states. Okay, so now I'm going to go into the button one objects variables and I'm going to make two variables. The first one is going to be called state and this is just going to be set to zero. So for this state variable, zero is going to be idle, one is going to be the hover and two is going to be pressed. Then I'm going to make a second one and this one's going to be ID and this one's going to be what we're going to use to make sure we know which button's being pressed to do something. And I'll explain more about this when we get to it. But for now, it's just going to be zero. So now I'm just going to make an external event and I'm just going to call this buttons. The scene is going to be this new scene. I'm just going to click on this add button here and I'm going to do for each object. And the object is going to be button one. So now I'm going to make a sub event of this and I'm going to check if the button one state variable is equal to zero, then I'm just going to tween the three different objects depending on the state. So the idle state, I'm going to tween the opacity of button one. I'm going to call it button one opacity 255. I'm going to set the opacity to 255. I'm going to make the easing linear and I'm going to make it 50 milliseconds. And I'm just going to copy and paste this except for button two. I'm going to make it zero. I'm going to make this zero and I'm going to do button two opacity zero. And I'm just going to do the same thing for button three. Okay, so this is going to be the idle state, i.e. when the mouse is not hovering over it. Now for the hovering state, I'm just going to reorder these. Uh, button 2 is going to be 255 and button 1 is going to be 0. And now for the pressed, which is 2, I'm going to make the button 2 0 and button 3 is going to be 255. So currently, this won't work because the only object that we have in our scene is the button 1. We haven't created button 2 or 3. So to create these two objects, I'm just going to add an action, do a create, then create button two on the button one dot X and button one dot Y. I'm going to do this for the button three over here as well. And I'm also going to change the width and the height of the object as well to match button one. So the height is going to be height of button two. It's going to set to button one dot height. I'm going to reorder this and then button two. And then the width of button two is going to be button one dot width reorder this so i'm going to copy and paste this for button three and this as well so now every time the state is one or two we're going to create these objects but we need to delete them for performance reasons once our state is zero so for this i'm going to make a sub event and i'm just going to check if the opacity of the nine patch object so two is less than or equal to five let's say and if it is then i'm just going to delete the button two object and I'm going to do the same thing here but for button three and so now I'm going to take this button three one make it a sub event of the uh, hover and I'm going to take the button two make it a sub event of the pressed so even if we play this now it won't do anything because we aren't telling it to do anything we aren't telling it to change the state so I'm just going to make a sub event of this and we're just going to do our simple cursor is on button one if it is then change the state to one if it's not change it to zero and then if it's being pressed then change it to two so now the last thing we need to do is link the external events to the scene events so add make a link and go to buttons and now you can see it looks very fancy so now i can quite literally just make lots of these buttons make them different sizes and they all work independently from each other so now i'm going to show you why we have the id variable so let's say we wanted one of these buttons to quit the game i'm just going to have id3 let's say so now this button has an ID of three, whereas all these have an ID of zero. So now in my scene events, I'm gonna make a new event and I'm just gonna see if the cursor is on button one, if the cursor has been released, and if the ID variable of this is equal to three. If so, then we're gonna quit the game. So what this does is if you see if we click these, nothing happens, but if we click this one, it quits the game. So this just makes it so that you don't need a separate object for each button function. 
you can just have three objects make them nine patches which makes them um, any size you want and then just use the id to see which one's been pressed so if you wanted to you could use these as tabs or just normal buttons so i hope this helped you and have fun Thank you.